architecture started in a cave and where architecture is now there's been a lot of morphosis um, in that time in that period it is important to understand that culture in itself is a preservation and an understanding of one's history that's one thing that really inspires us going to a space which was inhabited by a man you know our sort of forefathers we've been for the last maybe century of so been doing the same thing over and over but i think it's time now we asked what's next for mankind and architecture there's a culture in not only architecture itself and its location and the context in which it's built but more importantly where are we going from from here what's the next thing and i think that's something we want to explore it's it's an explicit thing to say origin is just as important as the final product in a way that that was the start and bizarrely it could be the end it could be uh, the final chapter of architecture as we know it back to the cave The cave is a young design bureau questioning how things are done and trying to find a different and perhaps a better way of doing those things. The cave is a space of collective minds. The cave is a place where ideas get tested and tried. The map of Africa. Um, we flip it round because in space there's no up or down. And by doing that, we're questioning how the map of Africa and in fact the world is represented. How people perceive their identities within the continent and how they define uh, themselves within the continent and what they do. So we're looking for the root of each and every thing we do. We feel there's a bit of a lack of, of rigorousness in how things are done in this part of the world. There's that pursuit to make money very quickly uh, and think later. But in that process, you find a lot of damage is caused and things that could have been thought through better are not, you know. So that, that's, that's the, the reason why we sort of try to look back and and slow down, look at the detail, because we find there's, a mo there's more value in doing that. Architecture addresses one of the most basic needs of a human being, which is shelter. You can escape art, you can escape music, but you cannot escape architecture. Before man was able to actually create symbols, architecture was present. When, when we talk about architecture in today's world and how it's transgressed over time and what we perceive architecture to be from the shack to the skyscraper tower, there's a language. And that language is our perception. It's the perception that we have of those follies or spaces. Architecture is usually defined in the sort of Western uh, developed uh, mind frame. And uh, we are not given a platform to talk about it. I guess the idea is trying to maybe get Cave be involved in that conversation. A city is that makeup of um, people living together. And when people live together, there's problems that arise. And those are some of the things you then start addressing. Um, in that context of the city, what are the problems that have come about because of this permanent settlement of very many human beings? And how do you solve those problems? We're living in a, a space and the city manifests that perfectly. Because you have, for example, Kibira, Madari, all these slums that sort of surround the heart of the city. And they actually are a manifestation of 
of our states of mind and our perceptions and our, our drives to be successful. And so we find that that's, that's a problem. The focus in architecture is always looking at oh, the pristine house in Mothaiga or in Runda. For people think that's, that's architecture, that's what, what the pursuit should be. But we're saying no, it should cater to solve the problems of the majority within the void. And, uh, and in a way that's why we have, uh, not intentionally, found ourselves working in projects in Kibira, Madare, Dandora, because really that's where the biggest need for architecture to impact. When we look at vernacular architecture and how we existed as Africans in different tribes from different regions of the country or land, um, we got colonized. And in that colonization, that also changed our perception of who we were and that perception of who we were changed who we are, and that's how we today perceive architecture in a totally different light. Hence why a lot of us also find that moving to the cities is a means of progress. We don't think about making, we don't think about the process enough in architecture. But to make it, for you, I just want to jump in there. And it goes back to the narrative of you're in the void, you know, you just want to jump there. For us, we are willing to take that step back, look at how you make things. This yellowish, the yellowish color. When we look at what CAVE is trying to do in terms of tackling certain problems, what was the mindset of early man? What were the, the, the lack of preconceived notions, the things that would actually make you think, if I tried this, this could be the outcome? There really wasn't anything to go by. So putting yourself in that position to some degree without calling it invention <laughs> is, is, is a, another means to solving some, some of these problems we have today. We've developed and designed the process, you know, um, and within that process, hopefully something magical can happen, you know, with an experimentation of materials, experimentation of how to build, and experimentation to even say, actually, we shouldn't build, you know. You don't need to build here. I can't wait for that day I can tell a client that. <laughs> you actually do not need a building, you know. Fire, 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 fire,